This is Amid Yemi Gemara and Shabbos, Daf Ayin Zayin Amid Beis. And once again, we'd like to dedicate all the learning as an incredible schos. Or for Shlema from Miriam Ahuva Bas Esther Bisiat to the Shemayo. The schos at Taira, Talmud Taira Kenegi Kulam, every word of Taira, worth all of the Taira, should be an incredible schos. From Miriam Ahuva Bas Esther and Tino Ben Miriam Ahuva. On the very bottom of Ayin Zayin Amid Aleph, we are three lines from the bottom and we quote the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Cholov Kidei Gimiya. That if you carry out milk, how much milk creates the chiv for carrying in Shabbos, said the Mishnah, Kidei Gimiya. Enough for a swallow of milk. So the Gemara begins, Ibai Lehu. Ask the Gemara, how do you spell the word Gimiya? The word Gimiya. Of course, in the Mishnah, it's spelled with an ayin. But ask the Gemara, Kidei Gimiya. Do we learn Kidei Gimiya or Kidei Gimiya? Should it be spelled with an ayin or should it be spelled with an aleph? Now, for us Ashkenazim, we don't really understand the difference as they both sound exactly the same. But in reality, the, pro- the appropriate and proper pronunciation, of course, has the difference between aleph and an ayin. Svardim still, and many try that the ayin has a little more of a guttural sound to it. So ask the Gemara, what is the word? Is the word an aleph or is the word with an ayin? Amr Nachba Yitzchak, quoting a pasuk by Eliezer Eved Avram, he says to Rivka famously, "Hagmini na matamayim ekadech." Let me fill you up a little bit of water. Hagmini, let me swallow you. Let me give you a swallow water from your jugs. We see over here that the word gimia could be spelled with an aleph as well. Ibayil hu, and once we quote one type of question. As we turn over to Ein Zayim and the Beis, the Gemara quotes a very similar type of question. Garinim, oy garinim. That when it comes to shells, are they spelled with an aleph or an ayin? Amar Rav Barula. Let's quote a let's quote an araya from a pasuk in Vayikra. Vinigra me'erkecha says the pasuk that Vinigra me'erkecha spelled with an ayin deducted nigra be lowered. From your valuation, proving that indeed the word is with an ayin. Ibayilu a very a third shaila. Oimimais oimimais. How do you spell when we have glowing coals? Is with an ayin or an aleph? Amar Rav Yisuf Rav Dimi. Let's bring a raya from the pasuk that teaches us. Arazim loy amemua began alikim. The arazim the cedars will not dim. Amamua began like him, proving us that Amamua, Paskini Cheskel, spelled with an ayin. Ibayilu a fourth shaila. Moomsin tenan oy moomsin. That when it comes to closing your eyes, that when a person is nifter achman alitzlan, you're not allowed to touch him, you're not even allowed to close his eyes on Shabbos. Says the Gemara, how do you spell that? Is it moomsin with an alaf or an ayin? So it teaches the Gemara, Rechib Rabbi Rav Yechanan, again, Quoting a passage now from Yeshaya of Oitim Inam Aris Bara with an Ayin. Continues the Gemara. We are six lines from. No, we are not, excuse me. Yes, we are six lines into the Yamud. Tanu Rabbanan. Hamaiti Chala. First line is Hamaiti. <clears throat> Someone who carries out milk. Behima. Chalav Shal Behima. Kedei Gimia. Chalav Shal Isha. The milk of a woman. Velubin Shal Beitza. The white of an egg, kidelitan bimishifa, shall kilar, enough to put into a, a little uh, pillbox, little ointment uh, container. Kilar, if it takes out kilar, kidei lasha vimayim, the mount to mix it with the water. So by Ravashi, kidei shifa, kidei achiza vishifa. By the kilar, do you need enough of it to mix, to apply to the eyes, or enough to put on one's fingers? And therefore, put it onto the eyes. The way they would put this kila, they would put a little bit on the finger and then put it in the eye. So, obviously, when you put something in your finger and then you put it in your eye, that which goes in your eye is a little bit less than that which goes in your finger. So, a little bit is on your finger. So, the Gemara wants to know, of course, it's a dot, but that dot could be the difference between the chatzas or not. Is it the amount that goes into your eye or the amount that goes in your finger and says, Gemara, take you? We're going to have to wait for Leo and Navi to answer that one. Continues the Gemara, Dvash, first word on the line, six lines from the wide lines. The amount to put on a sore. Tana, we learned to the right, to put on the opening of a sore. So, by Ravashi, 
When we said enough honey to put on the head of a sore, does that mean on the entirety of the sore? Or maybe it means on the highest point, on the tip of that sore. And what does that come to teach us? It excludes the areas around the tip of the sore, which you don't have to put on. Again, uh, we're talking in uh, decimal points over here. We're talking in fractions. But again, that's going to be the difference between Chiyav Daraisa or not. How much is it? Enough oil, honey, to put over the whole sore just on the very top. Says Imar again, Teku, we're going to have to leave this one. I'm going to the two lines from the white lines. I'm going to have Anything that Hashem created in this world, Leibara, Tavar Acher, Levatala. Nothing was created, Levatala. Everything is created for a purpose. And as we'll see in a moment, the reason why we're bringing down this Gemara, which seems completely random, is because it's going to talk about sores in a moment. Says the Gemara, Vara, Shiblul. Shem created a slug. Why? Lekasis. Slugs could be a remedy on a sore. You put over a sore. Obviously, we don't necessarily know how these medicinal things work and what are the precise items. But if it's Chazal, you take the slug, you put over a sore. It can heal the sore. Bar zvov. Hashem created a zvov, a fly. Litzira. It cures a sting of a hornet. Yatosh. A gnat. Linachash. The bite of a snake. Vinachash. Hashem created the snake. Why? Lechafafis. It could create certain types of boils. Usmamis. A spider. Larkev. It could cure the sting of an arkev. Of an akrev, excuse me. Of a scorpion. Hechi avidle. Says, Gemara, how do you perform this? Cure, two lines into the white lines. One black snake, one white snake. You cook them up. And you rub the boils with this mixture of a black and white snake cooked together. Quite fascinating. And of course, we'll just remind ourselves anytime we learn Gemaras like these that obviously there's many, many various explanations from, you read it literally, two deeper explanations how these Gemaras make sense. But of course, we just try to get push it. Pshat. Tini's Gemara Tanu Rabbanon, third white line, Chamisha Amos. Hey, and there are five types of fear. Amos Chalosh, so in his fear of the weak, Al-Gibar, the weak is afraid of the strong. Amos Mafgia. The mafkia is afraid of Alari, the lion. Imus Yatosh, the gnat is afraid of Al Yapil, Al Apil, the elephant. Imus Samamis, the spider is afraid of Al Akrev, the scorpion. Imus Sinunis, the swallow, that's the name of an, uh, a creature. Al Anesher, on the eagle. Imus Kilbis, the Kilbis is Al Livyasan. Says Gemara, maybe you don't have micro, where do we see this in the Psukim? Hamavlig Shoid Al Oz. He caused the weak to triumph over the powerful. So what do we see? We see that the fear of the weak is upon the strong. I think I said it backwards. It's not that the weak are afraid of the strong. It's that there are times that even the strong can be taken over by the weak. Hamavlig shayid al that Hashem could cause the weak. This is the gavur of Hakadosh Baruch Hu that He caused the weak to be even greater than those who are powerful. Continues the Gemara Rav Zira Ashkech Rav Yehuda. He's standing by the door of his father's house. Rav Yehuda was in a happy mood. And he wrote to ask him anything in the world. Rav Yehuda would tell him. So Rav Zira started asking Rav Yehuda about different natural phenomena. Rav Yehuda would say to him, so he would ask him anything and Rav Yehuda would answer. So Rav Zira started asking him kashas. Omar Lehi, Rav Zira said to him, My time is a in Berisha. What's the reason that goats walk always in the front? The Hadar Imra. And after the goats walk the sheep, Omar Lehi reviewed and responded, Kibrasa Shel Oilam, like creation of the world. The Berisha Chashucha. It was first dark, Vada Nechusha, Nechura, and then there was light. So the dark colored goats are going to walk in front of the light color. Continues the Gemara, another Kash Rav Zira, Rav Yehuda. What is the reason that the back of the sheep is covered by a tail while the back of the goat is not covered by a shale? There's no 
tail, tail that covers the back end of the goat. Says the Gemara, Hundim is Kazmi, now you the sheep that we cover ourselves with, with the wool that comes from them, and they are covered as well. The goats, which do, we do not make clothing out of, are not covered in Megali, and they are exposed. So what is the reason the camel has a small tail? Because it eats thorns, therefore it has a short tail, so it doesn't come entangled in the thorns. What is the reason an ox has a long tail? It lives in the swamps, and the long tail needs to be there to chase away all the flies. What is the reason that the horns, the antenna of a locust are soft? Misham the Dari Bechilfa lives amongst the willows, which are very, which are very stiff. The Kasha, and if the antennas were strong, if they were stiff, Nadia and his Avra, they would become knocked off when the locust hits against these branches, and that would cause the locust, if it doesn't have its antennas, it cannot see. Damar Shmuel, I'm on the way to Lassami, the Kamsa, you want to blind the locust, Lishlafinu Likarne, just knock off it. What is the reason why the lower eyelid of the rooster raises up and closes the upper eyelid? Other animals, the upper eyelid closes the lower eyelid. Why by the rooster does it go from the bottom? It dwells on boards and beams, and therefore there's often going to be smoke coming from the bottom. The Isle Kutra, and if smoke were to get into the rooster's eyes, Ms. Avra would blind it. So Hashem created the Nisim that the eyelid comes from the bottom. Dasha, why is a door called a Dasha of Zerash of Yudah? Derech Sham, Dasha comes from Derech Sham, it's a way over there. Darga, why is a ladder called a Darga? Derech Gag, Miskolita, why is dipping sauce called Miskolita? Masay Tichla Das, because when you eat it, you always wonder when will we be finished. Besa, why is the house called a Besa? Says the Gemara, Ba Vaisiv Bey, because when you come to the house, you say, Come, who's in the city here? Biksa. Why is a cramp house called a big sa? Kiatka, because it's a narrow, small place. Kofta, a mortar is called a kofta. Kof vitas, it means tip, tip over and sit. They would use a mortar sometimes as a chair when necessary. Livni, why are bricks called livni? Livne b'nei, because it means it will be around for one's children and children that bricks last. Hutza, why is a fence called hutza? Chatzitza, chatzitza, it's a partition. Chatzba, why is a barrel called a chatzba? Shechaitza ma'im in nahar, because you could draw water from the river. Kuza, small jug called a kuza. Kaze, because it's like this, a small jug. We finish off. Shaitisa, why is a myrtle called a shaitisa? Shetusa, because when you dance with the myrtle branch, you look like a fool. Meshechla, why is a washing trough called a meshechta? Mashe kula, because it washes everything. Mashkilta, why is a, a fancy washing pitcher called a mashkelta? Mashe kalta, because that's what a kala washes itself with. Asita, why is a small mortar called an asita? Chasirta, because it's missing something. Bochna, the pestle is called a bochna. Ba come and hit it. And finally, he ends his kashas by asking different items of clothing, which are lavusha. Why is an outer a jacket called a lavusha? Laibusha, because it makes you not be embarrassed. Galima, a top coat is called a galima. Shanasa by kigailim, it makes you look like a galim. You cover it over your form. Gulta, a cape is called a gulta. Gali va'asif, because it reveals himself. Puria, a bed is called a puria. Shaparim v'ravin alea. Why? Because that is where people have children upon it. Bar zinka, a dried out water pit is called a bar zikna. Bar zanaki, because this bar is clean. Sudra, why are the Rabbanan called, their head wrap called a sudra? Sayyid Hashem because it's covering over their side. It's coming over their, their um, uh, secrets. A panda, and finally a pal is called a panda. A pisle dinan. Because it is this door. And Tanur Rabbanan Shlesha calls man shem azkinu maizivin gvura. Three creatures, as they get older, they get stronger. Ve'eluhein, dog, nachesh, and chazir. The fish, the snake, and the swine. We'll pick it up from here. B'siyata, dishmaya.